Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this video. I'm glad you're here and to join me on another episode of Legacy Media and Computers Unwrapped. This is another computer reset unwrapping. This came from the hall of January 2022 when I went down to Garland, Texas and was able to finally get to the warehouse. What we're going to be unwrapping right now is the IBM... PC binary synchronous communications adapter and open the box up and see what's in there. Uh, should still be sealed unless somebody uh, unwrapped it for me <laughs> between getting it shipped uh, back to the Northeast from Texas and the day I'm doing this video. That's interesting, the discoloration of the box. I don't know if that's just uh, the way the cardboard was or the many, many moons in the warehouse. So what I can tell is the binary synchronous communications adapter is essentially a special type of serial communications card that offers up to 9600 baud synchronous uh, communications capability. You could hook it up directly to mainframes. You could hook it up to modems. You could, well, anything that was, anything that could transfer at up to 9,600 BPS. Okay. Let's see. Well, looks like the first thing we have is the shrink wrap, sorry, shrunk wrap destructions, personal computer XT, personal computer expansion unit, and personal computer. Boy, that's a lot in there. Let's put that off to the side. And then... Oh, boy, so is, is, this is kind of strange. As far as I can tell, um, this is original tape, right? So not unless there was some kind of um, anti-static capability for the card, or the, the styrofoam. Like, I'm kind of surprised. Like, there's no... There's no anti-static bag um, for this card. And well, there it is. There's the whole card. There's a 25-pin nail connector. So let's take a look at the documentation which I'm, I am kind of very impressed. This shrink wrap is not uh, squeezing the, the manual like other unwrappings we've done where the cellophane is <laughs> shrinking around what it shouldn't be shrinking around. Okay. What is actually in? Looks like a shrink wrap of some shrink wrap. Okay, so oh. we'll have to open that. And what else is here? Um, hmm. Slightly updated version of the diagnostics 2.01. I do actually have a. Oh, wow. <laughs> in the um, guide to operations that I have for this PC. It's version 2.05. Guess we don't have to worry about that. All right, what else do we have in the documentation? Well, we'll open up the next layer of shrink wrap. And please ignore the telephone. Uh, 
Okay, so of course, we've got the usual thing that tells you, you know, where it needs to go if uh, you're installing options. Then we have, looks like a couple of books. Um, yep, options, binary, synchronous communications adapter for IBM personal computer. And then we have uh, the chunk of documentation for problem determination procedures, otherwise known as PICS. And a lot of this looks familiar. Just have to update this in the uh, in my guide to operations. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna skip that. They do have a section here um, for the XT or the personal computer expansion unit, which later on the video we're actually going to put this in the expansion unit. And then, um, hmm, interesting. So I'm curious how this will work. So the guide to operations that I have, of course, it's for the PC. And the PC's guide to operations, section two is setup and not problem determination um, as indicated here. So if, we, if I do have a PC, but I have a PC with an expansion unit, how does this work? Do I uh, not uh, use the uh, PC's pick pages? Or do I end up, you know, really stuff these in um, the problem determination procedures instead? I guess that's uh, subjective to um, personal preference, right? So, okay. This concludes the unwrapping. It says I'm going to kind of shuffle stuff around here because the next step is to get the monitor shuffled over and get the uh, cover off the expansion unit. But I guess one thing that I do want to do first before we get to that is we're going to boot up. We're going to boot the 5150 and 5161 up first and um, need to look at the installed options list. Um, better to do it now is one of the things that the instructions for any card, they'll want to know, well, what do you have installed so that you can set any appropriate jumpers before you install your card. Expansion on first, and then the system. System checkout, of course.
Okay. So it looks like we ended up having two asynchronous communications adapters, and I guess what I'll end up doing is probably might end up replacing one of those. And, uh, get it in here. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So I didn't uh, wasn't gonna have you look at my posterior for the few uh, minutes so that I was kind of rearranging things on the table and then taking the key lock off and getting the screws and the cover off. But here is the inside of the expansion unit. As you can see, it is fully populated. The two 20 meg hard drives and all the expansion cards. And um, I don't remember what's what or where's where other than slot eight is the receiver card for the expansion unit. And uh, actually it's gonna make things a little bit interesting for me now, not knowing the order in which um, the cards are in. So I'm gonna to try to find the alternate asynchronous adapter, I'll try to Actually, if I can, can I uh, connect the extension cable? There we go. We'll turn the, turn the expansion unit around. Get a little bit better look in here. So one of the more expensive cards that I've put in here, and this is off topic, but the voice communications option, which I didn't know at the time, um, also serves as a modem. You can actually use it uh, as a modem and not just for the advanced software that takes advantage of the voice communications option. So, okay. So actually let's uh, just come back a little bit. So it looks like, of course, this is the receiver car, this is the game port adapter, and either of these must be um, the asynchronous communications adapter. Although I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised. Actually, no, that might not be true. One of them might be the synchronous data link control, and the huh that's uh that is kind of interesting okay so not unless it's this one here we might have to take them all out i'm sorry to be rambling on um all the cards in here are legitimate ibm pc cards with the exception of this is an intel 8 16 ethernet card and, well, maybe someday um, we'll get this fired up. Although I'm thinking I might end up pulling it out so that I can put other original PC XT expansion cards in here and use it for another special project that we have got coming up on the channel very soon, um, depending on when you're watching this. So, okay. Let me zoom out, and we'll <laughs> we'll have to take some take some cards out of here. The one slot, of course, that's the hard drive controller card right here. We're not going to end up taking not going to end up taking that out, but uh, the screw does need to get tightened up a little bit. Okay, game control. Well, let's see what we got here. Oh, <laughs> my bad. I'm yanking on the game control. And okay, so this is one of the asynchronous communications cards. 
and hmm. just to be on the safe side just to be on the safe side going to hook up the expansion unit hopefully don't break my expansion unit cable because uh, we all know how rare those are and we will plug the expansion unit back in just so we can power it up and uh, take a look at the install devices list and I figure it might be easier for me that way right now. Interesting, uh, you probably can't notice from the video, but the network card, the activity lights just banging away in yellow. System check out again. Okay, so by taking this out, <laughs> apparently it thinks, and I probably did that incorrectly when I am um, trying to adjust the jumpers here. Taking it out, it says I have no asynchronous communications adapters now. Okay, which is fine. So. All right, let's uh, park the drive heads again. and get the um, synchronous data link, sorry, the synchronous communications adapter installed in this slot. Uh, 
if I can. And never seem to have a lot of luck. All right, so that was quick. Let's turn it back on. And we'll see once we get the diagnostics reloaded if it'll show up in the list and uh, then we'll put it back together. And figures I should be by the keyboard, right? So we're going to do system checkout. There it is. So the binary synchronous communications adapter is device type number 20 and all the slots are full. So, although, you know what it could do, um, if I'm going to plan on taking that network card out of there anyway, I could put that in there next. But save that for another time shall we or if I do end up doing it now I will make sure to add uh, the next part of the video so you know what as quickly as I said I ah, will do it another time I figured I already had the thing apart why not do it now so I'm gonna take the Intel 816 uh, network adapter out um, only because it I think it really is hard to get a I mean, it's not impossible. Other people have done it in less memory, get those sort of systems online. I'm really going to save that capability for the special project. And just want to check the options. No. Option examples. Okay. Uh, jumpers are in here. No. Okay. Displays, memory, and general communications. Hmm. All right. I'm not a hundred percent sure about 
the jumper block, but we'll just put it in as is. See, uh, see what happens. Turn it on. Hopefully it'll be, you know, content with it. Okay, last time starting this up and loading diagnostics, at least for this episode. Okay, system check out. Okay, so that does kind of make me wonder. 11 and 12, the, a single asynchronous communications adapter comes up as both regular and alternate. But that's okay. I'm going to park the heads and call it a night. Thanks for joining me in this episode, and this is Daniel from LMC Unwrapped reminding you, if you still got spinning rust in your retro, always park your heads. See you in the next video, everybody.